Nick, uh, this actually moved yen and then it kind of, um, you know, stabilized a little bit. We thought, that, I mean, the investigation is ongoing. We thought this had gone away. Again, it's also linked to the wife of the prime minister. Could this, you know, what does this mean for economics if the finance minister has to step down? Well, let's see there. But I think when you think of the yen more broadly, it's sort of caught between a rock and a hard place. So it's the classic beneficiary when we get those bouts of risk off. So the flight to quality from things like the uh, issues around trade. The other side of it there, though, is um, that when you look globally at central banks, the Bank of Japan is in the vanguard of keeping policy really easy. The key for Abenomics is Kuroda, uh, reappointed uh, yet again. So that's really what the market's focused on. He's seen very much as, as the guardian and in the vanguard of promoting Abenomics. OK, Albert, I'm looking at uh, dollar yen. It's 106.53. Is this still very cheap? Look, today there is some news about the, this, this scandal. But uh, tomorrow you're seeing that both the um, ECB mm -hmm. and the BOJ uh, are going to gradually follow the Fed. Now, the question is <coughs> probably not in the next three months. Uh, but towards the end of the year or next year, mm -hmm. um, these two central banks account for half of global central bank balance sheets together. So the Fed is only a quarter. If you take the Fed, ECB, uh, Bank of Japan and PBOC together, you know, the fulcrum is ECB and POJ. So if they, get, um, if they lose the dovishness, then you're going to see the real change in global bond yields uh, and in their currencies. So currently, the reason why only U.S. Treasuries are widening, but every other bond market is still relatively stable, is that the ECB and BOJ are keeping policy easy. So we're getting a bit closer to a big development here, which is about policy normalization. Fiscal policy is accompanying it, yes, uh, but the BOJ is key.